Hey everybody. All right, well, I've been kind of frustrated with this lately um, because I came across something interesting and now I can't explain it. And I'm slowly uh, removing the variables from this to see what is playing, what is, what is, what's happening here. You know, I mean, I can make, I can speculate, but until I do a pro proper methods of control and ensure that I take out all the variables, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, uh, right now, this is this is distilled water. This is a this is my third water change out, distilled water, and uh, after my first, because I didn't, I didn't think it was going to work, to tell you honestly, um, after my first distilled water and it worked, I was like, oh, okay, um, and I cleaned out the cell and, and, and then asked for some advice, and that's the advice I pretty much got at the same time, and I was like, oh, cool, all right, well. That's good that I did that, and then I, and then it worked again, and I cleaned out the cell more just to make sure. And now I'm to the point where um, I'm not seeing any corrosion. The water clarity, the water clarity looks about about the same. It's staying really clear, um, and. Uh, and uh, I took out some some variables here, and so I'll show you some of them. First, uh, this is the this is what got me started on all this is this pulse width modulator I got for Christmas uh, uh, was for motor speed control for uh, it's for a rotary spark gap asymmetrical rotary spark gap is what I got it for, and to experiment with that. And uh, so my the missus that's what the missus she asked if I wanted something cheap, and so this is what I came up with. But uh, after looking at it, after she got it and looking into its its uh, its details, I noticed some interesting things. One being it's it's a Victec, and that was, that caught my eye. I'm like, a Victec? Okay, well, what's that about? And uh, and then it's a uh, it says this H it pulse width modulator HHO RC controller. So I was like, well, well, that, they say you can make HHO. Sure, okay. So that's why I started experimenting with this. Then the um. The other factors, the, the variables I have not now I have to start going through are basically this, and that is um, the cell design. Because I took out this part of the circuit as a variable, I'm just using the pulse width. This is just across the pulse width. I still have these um, these diodes in across the cell, and that's it. So this is out of the equation now, and. And I'm still getting production. So after that happened, I'm like, okay, now I have to go into deeper, deeper detail. So it's not, it's not the circuit that's causing it. It's the pulse. It's the pulse with modulated circuit, perhaps, but not this. And and also I made, and it's at right now it's at 230 or 280 hertz. And I made a mistake, I believe, in a video or two back, where I thought that this the the frequency varied. Um, the frequency varied with the pulse width modulation. Um, but it's not the case. All that all that changes. The pulse width stays the same. The only thing that changes is the on-off time of the width itself. The pulse width. It's the only thing that changes, which makes sense. It's the reason why it's a pulse width modulator, right? So, but anyways, um, here are some of the the variables in it. I'm using nitinol wire. I'm using stainless steel as my conductors, and then of course water as the insulator or conductor, however you want to look at it. It's kind of in. It's kind of in the middle there, <laughs> um, but. Uh, now the stainless steel, not, nitinol wire is an unknown as far as the effects it has on a hydrogen cell because as far as I have researched, I can't find anybody who's ever done it. So that's the whole purpose of, of me doing it in the first place was besides having the capability to have a pulse width modulator was to use nitinol to check her out and see if there's a, you know, what, what to do. It's just a, you know, a curiosity. So, and then the stainless steel screen, I am, my, the person I got it from told me that it is, Surgical grade stainless steel. They use it on gutters. It never rusts. They never have to change it out. Um, but I am unsure, and he was unsure, if it was 316, 440, or 420 stainless steel. So that's the difference between uh, many, many different alloys. Um, surgical grade, the true surgical grade being, uh, being cr um, chromium, nickel, and mono monobelinum. Uh, however you say that. Um, and then 
the other steels being uh, variations of carbon steel and, um, and and its alloys. So different amounts of carbon. Sometimes they use um, nickel and sometimes every, occasionally titanium, zinc. It just depends on the alloy. So that is a big variable that I need to investigate. Um, the other variable are the insulators being nylon stockings or tights, uh, borosilicate glass on the outside, masking tape. Uh, it, does masking tape have an electrolyte in its adhesive? Unfortunately, or, and then one other thing is the plastic uh, pieces that are holding it, the zip ties. Right, so the zip ties there. You can see I'm starting to get some plumes now, some streamers, which is a sure sign of electrolysis, but um, the masking tape. And, uh, oh, and I don't know if I showed this, but I'm at like mm, 70 milliamps according to this analog meter. And it is an analog meter, is a penance, but uh, the analog meter is more accurate than the digital multimeter. It seems like at least this one, this one's a cheap digital multimeter. So, um, so now um, that, that's another factor, but I wouldn't think that the nylon or that plastic would really contribute anything to the cell. Uh, so cause there's no cotton. I, I made sure not to use the cotton part in the crotch. And here, hey, this is all part of my research. As you can see, I'm hard at work here. <laughs> but uh, um, that's I have a I have a this this is the more important one is to find the adhesive in the tape. So and <laughs> unfortunately, there is a lot of different makes different types and patent pa patented adhesive chemical bonds and all that kind of stuff which is frustrating because now it you know makes this variable also difficult to pin down so those are two variables though that I need to investigate all right and then and then the the most different the most the different part about this cell besides the night null wire is the construction and the design I made itself is the inner electrode is just a solid wrapped on itself piece, all right? It, it could be considered a shorted electrode, um, and it's on it's on the negative. It may look like positive, it's probably because I erased it. It's on the negative side, so the center part is the negative. Um, the, then there's a neutral plate, and in between this, there's that ni there's nylon wrapped around all, all these, so these none of these are, all, are touching themselves. This, this, you have a water, you have water in between to this, right? But these two are right in close proximity, and there's no, they're not touching themselves. So, um, because there's a nylon wrapped like, looks like an electrolytic capacitor, basically. There's a little, um, you know, paper membrane in between. The only difference is instead of paper, I'm using nylon. So, and I used a paper towel, and, uh, and that worked. And, um, let's see, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much all I've been through is just a paper towel. That was when I first started doing the cell before I started using distilled water. But, um, so then we have our neutral plate, which is not connected to anything. It's just neutral in between. But it, if you notice, it has a gap on it. And, and that's just representing, I mean, it's actually spiraled and wrapped around, but the, I'm just showing the gap to represent um, the fact that it's not shorted on itself at all. And then this final one is the same deal. It's the, it would be the positive on the outside and it, it too is not touching itself at all. It's shorted, there's, no, there's a gap. It, connected on one side and then it wraps around and wraps around with the nylon spacing and 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 this wrapping with it like an electrolytic capacitor um, so you have shorted piece and unshorted pieces and before I put this neutral piece in with just the tap water just these two would do the job so long as one is shorted and one is unshorted and when I did do an ex when I do do experiments or when I did do the experiments where um, you know that they both were shorted, uh, it, it wouldn't work, even on tap water. And so that was an interesting thing to note, but I have to, I have to go through all the, all the means to make sure that that's not the reason why it's going on here, because you, know, you have to make sure that you go through, you know, use a control and go through all the other methods. So what I'm gonna do is, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'll try to do this. Uh, well, I'll do that in another video. So I'll I'll take out I'll eliminate some of the, um, this is going to be what I'm going to be doing this weekend pretty much. Um, I got some other things I'm working on, coil jig winder and that I probably 
made look way too vintage, but it looks really nice, right? So anyways, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. I got a bunch of other stuff I've been working on. But um, this has been something that's kind of ra been racking my brain. I've been racking my brain on this because I can't, it's hard for me to believe that just the cell geometry of uh, uh, shorted and unshorted, in a sense, um, is really that big of a difference. But then, you know, you think about a diode and how a old school vacuum tube diodes were made. And so and that's, that was one of my inspirations for doing this along with, man, that was, some, that was a big bubble. That was one, one, oh my goodness, my cat just laid an egg. Holy cow. <coughs> Anyways, uh, but that was one of my inspirations. As, as, but actually, my original inspiration on this was, um, again, I think I mentioned this, was, uh, was um, Maker J101 when he was doing an induct uh, ZVS induction heater. I'm pretty sure it was ZVS, but an induction heater. And he noticed that when he cut the when he would cut the pipe, or if he just had a, a you know a flat piece of metal and he put it in between in the induction coil, um, it wouldn't heat up. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Why is it that when you have like a solid piece or a or a a closed pipe, it heats up, but when it's open, it doesn't heat up. Is it reflecting? So that that got me into that. So, anyways, hopefully there'll be more videos on this. Um, and uh, like always, thanks for watching, guys.